Jesus Christ. I'm so happy and excited to be worshiping with you in St. Louis in this beautiful church. Hallelujah. When we worship the Lord, God's presence comes into our life and our family and our church. And this morning, I'm happy that God gave us as an opportunity as a family to come here and worship with the church here. I thank God for each one of you, especially pastor and family. We enjoyed staying with them. I thank God for the two children. I thank God for the worship team that led the worship. I thank God for the pastor Samuel and uh, his family and the psalm that we heard. And every member who is attending this church. God bless everyone. Hallelujah. We are so happy and excited to come here. Uh, we came to St. Louis in West Plains in 2015. Now, uh, five, four years later, 2019, I'm glad that God brought us back again this, this time. As Pastor just said, that my sister lives here, and uh, we are spending some time with her, and then it happened that we could come here and spend this morning with you. As we worship together, we must realize that God has a purpose in each of our life. A purpose in this world and the purpose eternally. So today, as we hear God's word, May God reveal the plan that he has for your life. Yesterday I was so happy to be in the basement and spending time with you sharing God's word. This morning God has a very special message for you. And I'm so excited because when you have got something special that God has meant for you, the delivery is like excitement of a delivery of your baby. So each time when God gives a message, the excitement is so powerful. I don't know whether you are excited as pastor was saying, I am excited about worshiping God. Hallelujah. Because when we prepare a throne of grace, praise, he comes down into our lives. So as we listen to God's voice, I want every one of you to praise and worship him. As we listen to the message, continue to praise him. Open your mouth and praise him. Hallelujah. Clap your hands and praise him. I believe in clapping hands. I'm a very heart promoter of clapping hands. Hallelujah. And that's why I rarely use a hand mic. I always prefer a mic on the stand because I love to clap hands. But this is an instrument everybody has and very easily you can play. Now let me tell you a secret that if you clap your hands you will live longer. I'm sure you will now clap better. <laughs> Hallelujah. Science has proved that there is something very special. The nerve endings here which stimulates very good and makes your life longer as you can clap louder and praise Him. God's presence will be abundant in your life. God has something very special this morning to speak to you because there is a purpose of this church in St. Louis. It doesn't happen accidentally. It was not a plan of a man. It, was a, it is a design of God. You and I are here by God's eternal design, not by accident. Because God loves this place and God has a meaning through our life. When I go to a city, we usually visit the parliament. We see a parliament house. I remember going to Texas. I never knew that uh, Austin was the capital. I always thought Houston was the capital. But uh, two years back when I was called to preach in Austin, they said Austin is the capital of Texas. And they took me around the pastor, showed me so many things. And I was amazed. So parliament is very important in a place. Uh, hospitals are important because many villages go around the hospital. The city develops around the hospital. And uh, many other institutions are important, educational in institutions like this school is important. I was sitting here and worshipping and I said, my God, this worship will change the atmosphere inside the school. And many children are going to be saved because you are worshipping here. I don't know whether you realize the power of your worship this morning here. It is going to leave a supernatural atmosphere. You may leave today, but this week we'll have continuous presence of God here. Because the people and children of God were worshiping here. Hallelujah. 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 Are you excited? You don't realize what you are doing. But heaven is realizing and heaven is open right now about this worship. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And as I was thinking, then I started realizing that the meaning and purpose of a church. We are not here as a tradition to just come and sing a few songs and uh, uh, speak some testimony and go back by tradition. We are here by an eternal design. And that's what God wants to tell you this morning. Hallelujah. 
since there are people who don't know Malayalam, I was asked to speak more in English, but maybe I'll say a few words in Malayalam also. Let's turn to Matthew chapter 16, verse 18. I'll start this with uh, message with this verse, and we will quickly go in because uh, we, I want to share many things uh, through this message. Matthew 16, 18. The key verse for this morning's message, which you have heard many times, I'm sure, is the word of Jesus. I will build my church. Jesus is the builder. We just heard about building the wall of Jerusalem. Jesus is the builder. He's a good carpenter. He builds and he's a good porter because he molds our life. He's a good gardener. All the skills that you have in gardening is from God himself. He's a good surgeon because he did the first surgery. So the surgical skill is from himself. All the things that you have learned in education because God himself is a good educator. He taught Adam and Eve how to walk, how to talk, everything. The language was his language. And now, today, he's saying, I will build my church. The biggest opposition against the church will not have prevail against it. No power in St. Louis can ever prevail against the church of God. What is this church? Why did God build a church? Why do we come for worship every Sunday? Some people just come because they have no other job to do on Sunday morning. I remember right from my younger days, I was so excited on Sunday morning to go and worship. And I was the first one to jump up and give my testimony. And I started giving my testimony just when I saw the children uh, giving, even on the, uh, on the hands held. I was so excited. I don't know how excited heaven is. Hallelujah. 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 God has a plan in and through each one of us. And everyone in this church is important because there is a ministry that God has in your life. You are not a spectator. Bible doesn't say there is a cloud of spectators watching you. It says a cloud of witness. Hallelujah. The church is full of witness. That means you and I have a role in this. At least clap your hands, you can have some role in it. Hallelujah. If you don't fill a chair, an angel will fill the chair. So don't have to fill a chair and waste that chair. What we need to do is a continuous worship of God. And if you learn to worship seven days, on the seventh day worship will be powerful. I will build my church. So if Jesus is the builder, he has a design. He has a plan. When you are building a house, don't you think about building for a long time? Or just go and start building overnight. I get an idea, buy a plot, the next day start. No, you as a person, you want where the kitchen should be, where the dining hall should be, where the entrance should be. You plan your house so beautifully. I'm sure God planned the church very beautifully. The tabernacle was designed from above. This church is designed from above. Our family is designed from above. We must understand that God has certain plans in our life. So the design is from above. 2,000 years ago, Jesus went back. We are the United States of America. We are the United States of America. What is Jesus doing there? He is doing something very actively. 2,000 years he has been preparing something for us. That's what we heard yesterday. A plan and design executed so that the right day when it is going to be completed, the trumpet will sound. Hallelujah. And if that is happening above, there is something happening below. That is this church in St. Louis. And you and I should understand what the eternal design is. It can happen in our life. Hallelujah. Isn't that exciting? So this morning, we are going to listen what his Christ designed 
and how he is going to do it. Let me go to Ephesians chapter 5, verse 29 and 30. This verse is usually read for marriages. I should read that. Ephesians 5, 29 and 30. Anybody? Yeah. No one has ever hated his own flesh. Hallelujah. Have you ever hated, have you ever liked pinching yourself? There is some diseases where you hurt, hurt yourself. It's only disease. I have treated children with diseases who bite and hurt their body. No sensible person ever bites himself. No one ever hurts his body. So this is about family, it's talking. But I am bringing it into today's message. This verse. No one ever hurts his body. His body. Next verse. But nourishes and cherishes, but nourishes, and cherishes it. Yes. Just as Christ also does the church. Just as Christ does to the church. That means church is the body of Christ. He never likes anyone to poke at the church. Here believers trying to poke their own body. It's only when the devil gets into you that you start poking at church. If you ever criticize any church or any congregation or any pastor or servant of God, you are actually poking the body of Christ. Woo! Do you realize the seriousness that we are doing? But if you are encouraging and massaging and feeding, you are actually being part of the builder. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When you lead the worship, you think it's a small thing? No. You are being part of an eternal design. When you come and clap your hands, you are enjoying God's presence. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If that is the thing, this morning God wants to nourish this church.
Jesus is the cornerstone and we are the living stones. There's no dead stone in the church. Is there any dead stone? Do you build the church with dead stones? No, we are all living stones. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There is no dead stone. He is the cornerstone. Now, how suppose you become a dead stone and you come there, what happens? No? Right? Abundant life. And suppose you are a chatta galla. And you are a jeevan lada chatta vandirikana. You are dead. What happens when a cold which is dead, no fire, no heat, falls onto the fire? What happens to the cold? Immediately the color change. Immediately the power change. Immediately the atmosphere change. That is why the church worship is very important. If you have become cold last week by some situation in your life, God wants you to change immediately. Because you are part of the living body of Christ. Let me go quickly forward. This means joining with Christ as the head. Why do we get the life? Because we are joining with Christ as the head. How is that possible? I, let me come into that a little bit quickly. First Timothy chapter 6 verse 16. I want to bring it to bring it to you that great mystery of Christ as the head and body as the church. First Timothy, Timothy, But I'm talking about this verse talks about God. First Timothy chapter six verse sixteen. It's talking about God who dwells in unapproachable light. Yes. Whom no man has seen or can see. Devatta yaru kandu tille aduttu kudan vayyatta velichathil vasikkinu. Angane ullu devatta kaanikkan aanu putra naya kristu vannadu. To reveal such a God. God Jesus came. Yes. To him be honor and eternal. So we are worshipping such a God. Aduttu kudan vayyatta velichathil vasikkinu ullu devatta yaanu nammal aarajikkinu. Now to make you understand. Have you ever stared at the sun for 10 minutes? Can anyone do that? Just sun, a creation of God, which gives us light, makes us, gives us day. If you try staring, when you get out of the service, you just try staring at the sun for 10 minutes. You will have to see an ophthalmologist very soon. No one stares at sun directly for that long. If that is the case, how will you even look at God? Do you get the point? It is not possible for a mortal being to look at God. And that is why he sent his only begotten son. So that we can see God through him. Hallelujah. On solar eclipse, people say, you must see the eclipse. But use a cooling glass or an x-ray film or something like that. So when you look through Jesus, the revelation becomes beautiful. Your eyes don't get hurt, but you become very clear. So through Jesus this morning, you are going to see a loving God, an eternal God, a faithful God, an unchanging God, a powerful God, an almighty God, an all-sufficient God. You are going to see Him. If you haven't yet seen Him, let God open your eyes right now to see Him. Hallelujah. And that is the purpose of this worship. That is the purpose of Sunday. That's the purpose of church. Hallelujah. In the last days, people will miss Sunday services very often. They won't miss breakfast or TV program, but they will take church very lightly. Because Satan wants the church to be more, not very significant. In St. Louis, the most significant thing for heaven is not the parliament house or the secretariat or the police station. It is the church. Hallelujah. And that is why I said heaven is open above us right now. That is why I said you are part of the body of Christ. Now to make it more clear, let me go to Ephesians chapter 5 and read verse 32. We were at Ephesians chapter 5, 29 and 30. Let's go quickly to 32. It talks about the body of Christ. This mystery is great. This mystery is great. Yes. But this is read only on 
wedding. This mystery is great. I think every Sunday service you have to tell this mystery. I am talking about Christ and the church. People don't take church seriously. They don't take pastors seriously. I say when Jesus left, Yeshu Boyapam, Sabaki Kodita, Eto Vilyas, Anigraham Nanma, Apostor and Mar, Vudai Stak and Mar, Idelan Devam Sabaki Vendi Kodita. They are not an accident. Doctors or engineers on the Sabaki Kodikin, Alnatra are going to Dazo or Gabani or Lorakan. Sabaki Vendi Kodikin, Vudai Stak and Mar, Apostor and Mar, Pravaja and Mar, Alan Sabaki Vendi Kodikin, Sapayan, the Eva Tripratania. Praise the Lord. I'm going to in the Tayaratra, Eto, Pratani, Moladana, Manasilaku, and they will come out of the Hallelujah. How important to realize your role in this church this morning. Do you have a role in this church? Or are you here by accident? What is God's intention that you have in this place? What is that God wants to do through your life? Are you able to do something? Put and give a contribution, just not in the offering, but as a person, as a man of God, as a child of God. This is the mystery which he talks about church and Christ. This is Paul what he is explaining. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 19 and 20. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 19 and 20. Then you are no longer strangers. Here nobody is a stranger. An alien. An alien. But you are fellow citizens with the saints. Yes. You are saints and you are part of God's household. I'm sure you were so excited when you got your American citizenship because you have more privileges then. I have a green card now. So when I come to America, not like how initially I used to came, came as a visitor, now I feel a little excited though I have the green card. So I go in a different queue, put my card and wait whether I can go green or cross or whatever that is. Imagine a citizen coming back to the country You are the citizen of the kingdom of God. If that is the thing, then you have privileges. Hallelujah. Once you come into the church, you are under the wing of healing. Kartav Devatinde Cheraginde Kiril Vandagarinal Malaki Pravinat Parayanuda A Cheragin Nadil A Tuvan Nadil Sauti Abonda. I didn't take which of the When you come to worship God in the presence of the church, you are coming under the wing of the God Almighty. There is healing there, there is peace and joy there. Your sorrow will automatically go. If your sorrow hasn't gone, there's something wrong. You have to check the temperature of that place. If you are still unhappy and you are going back the same way you have gone, you haven't yet worshipped the living God. There is healing under this wings. So when you come on Sunday for worship, things happen automatically. Because you are a citizen of this place. Praise the Lord. And you are built together as a holy temple. What does this next say? You are uh, continue to read that place, please. Having built together, right? Having been built on the foundation of the apostles. Yes. Yes. That's right. We are built together. Now. There was a time when I was small, we had prayer every day, almost every day at home. And we are so excited to see a man of God, a pastor coming. I remember going after so many pastors, staying with them, learning Daniel, book of Daniel. As a little boy, going. now we send the children to go and study, uh, play cricket, baseball. These are the things we are running, guitar. You don't send any child and say, go stay with that pastor for five days and learn book of Daniel and come back. I remember going to Talavadi and staying in Kochuma Motel when C.K. Daniel Appleton came there to take Daniel, book of Daniel. I told my father and mother, I want to go there. I want to learn the book of Daniel. And he was putting a chart and teaching me. Then somebody taught me about the tabernacle, uh, teach you much in Appleton. And I was there for one week just reading and writing and reading and going back to him saying, is that how it was built or like this and drawing the picture myself. Who is excited now? Hallelujah. 
let me tell you, Jesus is going to come back very soon. We are going to be in heaven. And you are going to meet, meet Malachi. He will come and say, Hi, I am Malachi. Oh, you better start reading Malachi because you're going to meet him. Hallelujah. God has a plan in our life. We are going to be in heaven. Live like us as if you are already in heaven. Because the kingdom of God is among you. Hallelujah. Let me stop for a few minutes and give my testimony in the middle. I don't know whether there's anyone, uh, those who haven't come for yesterday, is it Dr. Ann here? I recognize you. I was wondering, it's such a surprise to see. We work together in Ludhiana in the same department. Uh, yeah, so I was not wrong from the beginning. I thought that looks like Ann only. Yeah, <laughs> great to see you. So anyway, let me say my testimony since uh, there are people who haven't heard. I don't know whether you know my testimony. The first thing I did, I know, but Ann was there already. Uh, I came to CMC Ludhiana. I didn't know whether I would get admission or not. I met some people and I said, there was a CNI church, and I said, whether I can tell my testimony. So uh, the Achen and the people said, okay, here's somebody who's come for an entrance exam and wants to give testimony, because my only desire was in case I don't get, and I'm going back, Ludhiana should know my testimony. And I still remember when I finished my testimony and came back, that, that we had something called a ragging or inter integration program. All my seniors who were firing at me for the testimony, it became a big news in the campus. Here is a guy who has landed and uh, saying the testimony in the campus. So I had that uh, privilege and honor to be known like that. So I, wherever I go, I tell my testimony. Good thing is that then nobody will call you for wrong things. You have already declared oh, who you are. Secondly, they know the way that you're going to behave. Thirdly, it gives me a guard to be careful myself. So let me tell you my testimony for those who haven't heard. Very shortly, when I was born, I was born as a hydrocephalic baby. A huge head with water inside. This time to die or mentally, physically retarded, good for nothing. But Bible says, I was fearfully and wonderfully made. Bible says, the word says, even before you are formed in your mother's womb, God has seen you. God has seen you even before you are formed in your mother's womb. I could never believe that Bible verse. But when I went and saw an engineer who was building Pushpigiri Medical College, she showed me the medical college design before it was built. Then I realized that God can see me before I was formed. If an engineer can see the building before she created, God saw me before I was formed. Even the last day of my life, he knows. Don't be afraid. You are so worried about what's going to happen tomorrow. He knows the last day of your life. I was taken and shown to Dr. Jacob Chandy and Jacob Abraham. They said they will, he will not live. He will be physically, mentally retarded, good for nothing. People may talk against you. They will say, good for nothing. What is the point of your life? Don't listen to negativity. There is a God who says, I love you. I have a design for you. You are not here by accident. You are made fearfully and wonderfully because he has a purpose in and through your life. When everybody closed their doors, my parents started praying. They knew prayer was the only answer. We heard this morning, cry to God and he will answer you. They lifted their eyes under the hills and the answer came from there. The answer was, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and everything shall be added unto you. Hallelujah. They left the vomiting child with the grandmother, took this Bible and went out preaching that Jesus is the savior, Jesus is the healer, Jesus is the soon coming king. I'm absolutely sure David would have murmured in my mother's ear, go and he take, look after your sick child before you say that Jesus is the healer. But she didn't listen to the devil, she listened to God. She believed that God is the healer. If you believe that God is a healer, this morning healing is going to happen. If you believe that God is a deliverer, you will see the deliverance of God in your life. I don't care what is your problem, but God, I know God knows you. Hallelujah. I know God loves you. Hallelujah. When they went after the kingdom of God, the kingdom of God came after me. And Jesus healed me. That is why I'm running around everywhere saying that Jesus is alive. Amen. Believe me, Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. The same Jesus who rose Lazarus is able to raise up somebody. He's able to heal. Amen. I've seen paralyzed people walking in my hospital. I will tell you, I don't know whether you will understand. Many people easily understand. 
a couple of months ago, just two months ago, a Muslim patient came to me. I had treated him for a head, head injury and operated. And he had a major stroke and he was not recurring, uh, recovering fully. He still had hemiplegia with difficulty in eating with his hand and putting on the slippers. Uh, he came to my OPD and said, Oh, doctor, I suddenly remembered you are in Trishur. I was getting treated somewhere else. I said, Okay, then I'll get admitted. Let me see. It's anyway a couple of, a uh, lot of months, nearly more than a year. I don't know what will happen, but we will see. I admitted him, started some medication and physiotherapy. Next day, I saw him wearing the slippers and walking without any problem. One day, what medicine can make that difference? That I saw his hand moving very well. One day, what can make a difference? I saw his facial improving. One day, what medicine can change that much improvement? I knew it was a presence and the power of God working there. Amen. That Sunday evening service, he came and sat at the back. So I said, why don't you tell your testimony what happened? So he got up and said, I got admitted here last week. I did not give him injection, samadhanam, peace. He said, I got peace. So I wanted him to explain how God healed this. I said, what about your hand? What about your leg? He said, yes, yes, Uttari samadhanam giti, second time. Third time I said, I don't want to ask you a question. I don't want to ask you a question. So this man is possessed and obsessed with samadhan. It is not the physical healing that touched him. It is something deep inside. Today God is going to touch something deep inside. Oh, my God. 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 Hallelujah. Many a times you and I are running for things outside. But let me tell you, there is a man inside you, the soul inside you, the spirit inside you, that has to grow, that has to be alive, and that has to be on fire for the kingdom of God. Because there, has, there is a purpose that God has for this church. Hallelujah. Now God gave me a hospital in 2004, a neurosurgery center in Trishul. If a neurosurgeon gets a center with the machines to operate, I'm sure nobody will close it and run away. But I love the giver more than the gifts. Don't run after the gift, but run after the giver. Let's come back to the portion. We will go ahead because my time is running very short. Let's come back to Ephesians chapter 1, verse 4 and 5. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 4 and 5. Ephesians chapter 1. Yes. Before the foundation of the world that you and I have chosen, Pastor Shaji came to know about this church only a few years back. But this was church was seen before the foundation of the earth. Do you realize the importance? America was planned by some human beings, but God had planned the whole thing. God works through people. Nebuchadnezzar and Pharaoh was taken by God. Now India election is over and Modi has become a prime minister second time, so everybody is upset. I, I just said that God decided that he should be on the seat. And people are worried about BJP and RSS and opposition. I said, you don't really understand. BJP means bring Jesus to people. Because of that, people will start praying properly. Otherwise, our prayer is all traditional. Go hallelujah, sotram and go back. Who is having a real serious relationship? Only when persecution comes, only when sickness comes, only when problem comes, you are serious with God. But God wants you to be serious with Him always. Before the foundation of the earth that you and I are planned, I am not here by accident. God brought me here because God has something to tell you. Hallelujah. 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 I was so happy when we saw uh, uh, Danny playing and leading because, I, you know, somehow doctors have a weakness for doctors. I said, wow, God, I'm glad that this doctor is uh, spending some time here. I, see, I get excited when I see doctors because doctors don't have time. They are so busy. But there is a Luke in the book and there is a cover walking around like this and there is some, I'm sure God will empower him and uh, make him realize that this is more important than microscope and all the other stuff one day in his life. I also remember staying when I came to St. Louis first, the first time I came into America was to learn skull-based surgery. I came to St. Louis, I went to the uh, microsurgical lab here, learned skull-based surgery when no one from Kerala had ever come. I went back and started doing skull-based surgery. That time it, I was crazy 
I would only look for who is the best neurosurgeon, where is the best center, where is the conference. I came to Chicago after that for the American Association of Neurosurgeons. Now I look where is the pastor, where is the judge, because I have understood that this is important for God. This is important in heaven. I don't know whether you have understood where you are sitting. Right now you are sitting in the holy ground. You are here by the eternal design of God. You were chosen before the foundation. Yes, go ahead, please. That we would be holy and blameless before Him. The church has to be holy and blameless before God. Somebody was asked the question: Is there imperfect people in church in heaven? So the pastor said, No. No. All are perfect. Yes. All are holy. Yes. So the question, the interview got very amazed. But you people all look like sinners. I don't see any holy man in the church. He said, that is the main purpose of the church. We bring in sinners and the Holy Spirit sanctify them and slowly they become holy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When I got married, I was the biggest hot-tempered man around the countryside. I remember opening an uh, operation theater door and I saw the door flying because my leg didn't have that much power but my mind had something which was more. Now, Last 10 years, there is no anger. People say, I am a very gentle man. They don't know I am I'm not that gentle. Walking with the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit will transform you. Your anger will go. Your jealousy will go. Your all kinds of nonsense which is in your life will change because you are walking with the Holy God. Amen. Hallelujah. That is how Peter was completely transformed. That is how Moses was completely transformed. That is how David was completely transformed. That is the purpose of the church in St. Louis. Transforming sinners to saints. What a beautiful purpose for this worship. Do you realize the importance of this church? God wants you to understand. Let me go quickly forward. Chapter 3, verse 8 and 9. Ephesians 3, 8 and 9. Ephesians 3, 8 and 9. To read the very least of all saints. Yeah. We show the world the unfathomable riches of Christ. When Saul was persecuting the church, there was a voice from heaven. No one of the Talekana, Shadi that they took to Gadinal, Karain or Yeshu under some direct on the wind at the Deva Jeremy, Ningal Ningle, Snehik in the Ratigam, Snehik in the Deva Mondan, the Parayana, in the Parayan, the Deva in your duty. To tell you there is a God who loves you. You are telling nobody loves me. Nobody understands my problem. Why am I here? What is happening to me? But let me tell you there is a God who loves you. Hallelujah! And he hasn't finished with you. Either way, in the Jiva Trola Father, you will have a sign of Pichet Dilla. That I take part of the Cheta Pudia, the Toranga Bogia. You may have finished with yourself, but God hasn't finished with you. Me, Paradi Aravella, Kaidun, Pasha Deva Chela, the Pudia, the Toraka Boa. Edit Elia, Madi Gartave, the Vartipur, Madi Arke de Yoma Lava, and they owed each other Yoma. I want to come back to the main issue that why I brought to this portion. On the word in there, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16 and 17. Why is the church so important in the New Testament? In the word, they were Sabah, and I think Patomba is very important. Do you not know that you are a temple of God? Do we not know that you are the temple of God? Ningal Devatine, Ala Mandiraman, Aleman, Old Testament, you find that God found the whole place dirty. He created a tabernacle. 
made a holy, holy place and came only on the throne of grace. Parishitanai, the Yuatin Bumi, the Engum, the Ran Sadika, the Wanda, or Samaga, the Buddha, the Mandaki, Adivish, the Salamandaki, or the Kribas and the Parada from Atame on the Tolu. In them, and they in the Uli was secure. What a great privilege that God has given us. The Holy God has chosen you and I to be the temple of the living God. That is the mystery of the church, the difference between the Old Testament and New Testament. God wants to show forth the world who God is through your life. You and I are the fifth gospel. Revealing God to the workplace. Revealing God to your family. Revealing God to everyone around us. Because we are the temple of the living God. We are the temple of the living God. And that the Spirit of God dwells in you. The Spirit of God comes into your body on Sunday morning when you are singing songs. No? Dwells. Dwelling means no change of address. Not visiting you once in a while. Like I am visiting St. Louis. You won't find me tomorrow in pastor's house because I will be cold. I am just so visiting. The Spirit of God visits me in between on Easter and Christmas. No. The Spirit of God dwells in put a big around. It is dwelling in you. 24-7. I live and move and have my being in the Spirit. Dwelling in you. Revelations 3, 19 and 21. 19, 20, 21. This is to the church of Lebanesia. I never knew, I, whenever I was preaching, I was using this for salvation message. Either remember, e Convention, they had a good idea. They went to the Vashitama either Suvisheshamaki Allah, Suvisheshamaitanyana, Sabed only in Sunday service to say it again. Yes, read ahead. Those whom I love, I reprove and discipline. Yes. Therefore, be zealous and repent. Yes. Behold, I stand at the door. In outside the church is standing and talking. Behold, I stand at the door of the Levodosia church. Levodika Sabeda door and Avana in the Kotunun. Any on the Katana. We did it your kind and give us to the Gunyan or Tavishwas in the door and Avana in the Kotunun. If Prasha might have a Dambrane, either number of Yarai, Yara, and the Gavarin in the Kotun, the Gadea. Behold, I stand at the door of the heart and knock at the Waki. If anyone, even in the Arangle, if anyone, Aunt Martha Mining and Hutan Tolanda. Yes. Opens the door. I will come into him. I will come into him. And will dine with him. And will heal him and give him a new car and a new house and a new job and go back tomorrow. No, I will dine with him. Even the Not carrying problems 24-7, carrying the presence of God 24-7. Not worrying 24-7, but praising 24-7. Not thinking and questioning 24-7, but rejoicing and worshipping 24-7. An experience of being the temple of God, walking with Him. The mystery that the world is looking for, the mystery that heaven is looking for, is Colossians chapter 1 verse 27. Colossians What is the great mystery that was hidden in the Old Testament? which is revealed to the New Testament church is Colossians 1 27. Colossians 1 27. Colossians 1 27. God chose to make known how great among the Gentiles are the riches of the glory of this mystery, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Christ in you, the hope of glory. That is the mystery. Tala Christu Shariram Nam, connected with God 24 7. I, Nana, Kocha, and the Bombitla, 
കറി വെക്കാൻ കോഴിയെ കണ്ടിക്കുന്ന സമയത്ത് വേലക്കാർട്ട് അവിടെ പോയി നിൽക്കുമായിരുന്നു പിന്നെ ഞാനും അത് എടുക്കുമായിരുന്നു പരിപാടി അപ്പൊ ഞങ്ങൾക്ക് പയ്യൻ എന്റെ പ്രായമേ ഉള്ളൂ ഞങ്ങൾക്ക് ഒരു തമാശ ഉണ്ടായിരുന്നു സാധാരണ എല്ലാം ഒരു കാല് ചിറകയിൽ കാ കയ്യിലും വെച്ചേച്ച് ഇങ്ങനെ മുറിച്ച് അതിന്റെ പിടച്ചു കഴിഞ്ഞിട്ട് അതിന് വിടുവുള്ളൂ ഞങ്ങൾ മുറിച്ചേച്ച് ഒന്ന് വിടുവാൻ കറങ്ങുന്ന കാറ തലയില്ല കോഴി വോക്കിംഗ് അറൌണ്ട് ഓരോ ഏമും ഇല്ലാതെ കുറെ അങ്ങോട്ട് ഓടും കുറെ ഇങ്ങോട്ട് ഓടും കുറെ ഇങ്ങനെ വട്ടം കറങ്ങും അവസാനം പടപടാന്ന് അങ്ങ് പോകും തലയില്ലാതെ പോകുന്ന വിശ്വാസികൾ കറങ്ങുന്ന അങ്ങനെ അവർക്ക് അറിയില്ല എങ്ങോട്ടാണ് പോകുന്നത് ക്രിസ്തുവുമായിട്ട് യാതൊരു ബന്ധവും ഇല്ല മുറിച്ചു കിടക്കുകയാണ് കുറെ അങ്ങോട്ട് ഓടും കുറെ ഇങ്ങോട്ട് ഓടും കുറെ എല്ലാം കൂടെ കിടക്കും എവിടെ ഒരു പിടിയില്ല എന്തിനാ ജീവിക്കുന്നത് കുറെ കഴിയുമ്പോ ഷൂ അങ്ങനെയല്ല ദൈവം നമ്മളെ കുറിച്ച് ആഗ്രഹിക്കുന്നു നോട്ട് ലൈക്ക് ദാറ്റ് വി ആർ കണക്റ്റഡ് ടു ദ ഹെഡ് ജീസസ് ഹി ഡ്വെൽസ് ഇൻ ദസ് ദാറ്റ് ഈസ് ദ മിസ്ട്രി a 24/7 living relationship with god where you know why you are alive if you see john chapter 1 verse 16 it says he is filling you with the grace from the fullness of christ avan kripa avan christu vil ninna namme narakkunu yohannan 1:16 1:16 eduthirunna vaichonu avan ya naravil ninna christu vinda naravil ninna namak ellavarkkum കൃപമേൽ കൃപ വരും പെരിക്കുന്നു രണ്ടായിരത്തി പതിനെട്ടിന്റെ കൃപ കൊണ്ട് പത്തൊമ്പത് ജീവിക്കാൻ പറ്റില്ല ഇന്നൊന്ന് ചാക്കിനകത്തോട്ട് പെരിക്കാൻ പോവുകയാണ് ദൈവത്തിന്റെയും ആത്മശക്തിയുടെയും പെരിക്കാൻ പോവുകയാണ് the fullness of god had bodily dwelt in christ in colossians and we are complete in him christ will nammal poornadai thiruvan devam kripa therumaragatte colossians itself 33 colossians ke edrehan adinde 3 inde 3 colossians 33 for you have died and your life is hidden you are dead and your life is hidden with christ in god oh that means kovireyana doctor aanu ന്യൂറോ ആണ് ഇതൊക്കെയാണ് ഇമ്പോർട്ടൻസ് അല്ല ഞാനൊരു ദൈവ പൈതലാണ് ഐ ആം എ ചൈൽഡ് ഓഫ് ഗാഡ് വെൻ മൈ ഡോട്ടർ വാസ് ഇൻ ടെൻ സ്റ്റാൻഡേർഡ് ആൻഡ് ഇംഗ്ലീഷ് ടീച്ചർ ആസ്റ്റ് ഹിം ആസ്റ്റ് ഹർ ഹു വാട്ട് ഈസ് യുവർ ഫാദർ ഇൻ ഹരിശ്രീ സ്കൂൾ തൃശൂർ ഷീ സെറ്റ് മൈ ഫാദർ ഇസ് എ പ്രീച്ചർ സോ ദ പ്രോ ദ ടാസ് ടീച്ചർ വാസ് വെരി ആംഗ്രി ബിക്കോസ് ഐ ഹാഡ് ഓപ്പറേറ്റഡ് സം ചിൽഡ്രൻ ഇൻ ദർ സ്കൂൾ ഇറ്റ്സെൽഫ് so she said don't you know this is a secular school every time she used to get 10 out of 10 for the viva don't you know this is a secular school we all know your father he is a neurosurgeon she smiled and said he also is a neurosurgeon first thing is serving god amra jeevathinte pradhana vishayam devarajyamai deiva sabhayai suvisheshamai devathru vendi jeevikkunnadai thiruvan deivam kripa therumaragatte you are hidden in christ when somebody sees you they should not see you but they should see god ivudu nangane oru thirumanathoda poguvan devam ee nyaraaycha kripa therumaragatte kristuvine kaanichu kodukkunna paathrangalai kristuvine velippaduthunna vyaktigalaaki devam nammale theerkatte avasana rendu vaakyangalu vaichu njan ikkan povan two more verses and i will close john 17:21 john 17:21 jesus prayer is john 17 you must go back and read യേശുവിന്റെ പ്രാർത്ഥനയാണ് രണ്ട് വാക്കുകൾ മാത്രം ഞാൻ അവിടെ നിർത്തോട്ടെ വേഴ്സ് ട്വന്റി വൺ അവരെല്ലാവരും ഒന്നാകേണ്ടതിനും അവരും നമ്മിൽ ആകേണ്ടതിനും അവരെല്ലാവരും ഒന്നാകണം രണ്ട് അവർ നമ്മളിലും ആകണം ഞാൻ വിചാരിച്ചിരിക്കുന്ന ലെറ്റ് ഈസ് സോറി ഐ ഫോർ ഗീവ് മീ വൈ ഗോഡ് ക്രിയേറ്റഡ് സോ മെനി യുനോ പ്ലാനറ്റ്സ് ഒരു ദൈവരാജ്യത്തിൽ കൊണ്ടുപോയി ഇപ്പൊ സഭയെല്ലാം കൂടി ഇട്ട് കഴിഞ്ഞ് ഇപ്പൊ ഒരു സഭയുടെ ഉള്ളിൽ നടക്കുന്ന അടി തന്നെ ഓർത്തു നോക്കി അപ്പൊ എന്തായിരിക്കും അവിടെ സ്വർഗരാജ്യത്തിൽ അടി നിർക്കാൻ കർത്താവ് നടക്കേണ്ടി വരും പാർട്ടിയും പൊളിറ്റിക്സും അത്രമാത്രമാണ് ഇവിടെ ഇരിക്കുന്നത് ഈ ഒന്നാകാത്തതിനെ എല്ലാം കൂടെ അവിടെ കൊണ്ടുപോയാൽ എങ്ങനെ ഒന്നാകും വെരി ഡിഫിക്കൽസ് ഇവിടെ ഒന്നാകാൻ വയ്യാത്ത ആളെ കൊണ്ടുപോകാൻ പറ്റുമോ ഇന്ന് നമ്മൾ കേട്ടു അതിനെ കുറിച്ച് ഒരു ലിസ്റ്റ് ഓഫ് തിങ്സ് സങ്കീർത്തനം വായിച്ചോണ്ടിരുന്നപ്പോ അത് കേട്ടു അതിൽ അതെല്ലാം മാറിയെങ്കിലേ അങ്ങോട്ട് പോകാൻ പറ്റുള്ളൂ ഓൺലി ദാറ്റ് വി കെൻ ഗോ ദ ആദ്യം നമ്മൾ ഒന്നാകണം രണ്ട് നമ്മൾ അവനിൽ ഒന്നാകണം വി ഹാവ് ടു ബിക്കം വൺ ഇൻ ക്രൈസ്റ്റ് ആൻഡ് ദൻ വി ബിക്കം വൺ വിത്ത് ക്രൈസ്റ്റ് 
So let us emphasize the most important thing that we are one in Christ and we become one with Him. Other than 23. Yeah. Yeah. That we may become perfect in Him. Namal Avani Purna Agadri. Other Tarasamai, the Kinuri Aya Barnamati, Pratich and Namaka Sarika, Yohana and Palanade, Girvati Muna, John fourteen twenty three. How do we become one with God, one in Christ? That is the ultimate aim of the church. The church becomes the bride, one with Christ. John 14, 23. If anyone loves me, he will keep my word. Obeying God's command is the most important. This is the most important. Obeying God's word. If anyone loves me, he will keep my command. Yes. And my father will love him. And my father, for those who obey God, my father will love him. And we will come to him. And we will come to him. And make up Saint Louis Tanya, we will come to him. Unseen presence of God will become visible. A manifest presence of God where you work 24 7. They were me Sabe and Greek. I'm going to be a cattle at a camp. Care to one of the three of them at the Nepotist camp. In the one of 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 the but to understand God's plan and purpose in our life, that we may be touched and be changed by Him. The mystery of Christ in us. Christo will not on the other. Christo Namri Vasik in Anipo. Sabe etum will hear the Anna Manasiraki. Namaka Namretane, David in the Sabe Kaile came to Churika. He Sabe 